Okay, Bill, we've got you there on day one. What did you set out to do? Well, the first morning, I mean, I was just feeling my way and wanted to meet people and talk about you know, how, how the organization is operating. I discovered there were no staff at 10 o'clock when I arrived, but there were three bailiffs. And the bailiffs were looking around the building trying to find something to take away. And um, finally a member of staff came in and explained that there was nothing in the building the ICA owned because of the uh, making sure the bailiffs didn't take anything away. So everything was on higher agreements. I felt a little desperate. Um, I eventually had a meeting with the general manager who told me that there had been um, uh, there was there, were, there was money missing from the previous box office week. Something like three thousand pounds had disappeared, and I said, "Well, what are you going to do about it?" And he said, "Well, if they're going to take money, what 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 can I do?" I said, "Well, if you don't know, you'd better leave." And um, it was a rather quick dismissal of the general manager, <laughs> and um, I. I was desperate. All of a sudden, I was planning on going on holiday quite soon with my children, and I'd fired the man who was most responsible for the organization. And uh, the chairman was supporting me, but I think he was he was new uh, to the job, and I was new to the job. And he was the chairman or financial director of Unilever, and he was used to a very uh, elegant, smooth-running organization. And here was this quasi-chaotic organization. I cast around very quickly and recruited a young man who was the general manager of the Bush Theatre, uh, one of the directors of the Bush Theatre, and he came and joined me and he took over the job of general manager. He never knew what he was letting himself in for, uh, but he was superb and he was clever with numbers and in many ways we complemented each other. Uh, he kept me under control and, and I think I encouraged him in other ways. But that was the beginning of, of building a team and the, the essential thing I think at that stage was to build a team of people who you were confident in with. And the the ICA was I think demoralized at that time and um, the first few appointments I made were crucial. There was a woman called Sandy Broughton who, who, um, who became the press officer but she was much more than the press officer. She helped to guide all of the different departments as we created them in how to deal with the press but how to be confident about preparing themselves for the public in terms of the publicity and, um, and, the, and the promotional activity that goes on. And When you put on an event, most people think all you do is select an event and that's the, the work. That's 10% of the work selecting. 90% is finding a way to introduce it to the public and, and mount the performance and, and, and manage the event. And uh, Sandy was uh, a godsend in that area. And then slowly other people were added. And I created something called HODS, which was Heads of Departments meeting once a week. And before I came, every department such as they existed was, was full of secrecies. Every letter that was circulated said confidential on it. And I remember saying I didn't want to see any letter with confidential on it. I didn't want secrets and they shouldn't be afraid of anything. And they tried to explain to me why they were afraid or, and, and none of it made sense. And we abolished that and the heads of departments had a meeting with me once a week all together. And we produced the minutes and we circulated them throughout the building. And I think that changed things a lot because, um, I mean, I'm sure there were rumors that, that there was things being planned and done that were not minuted, but by and large, everything that was discussed at the heads of the department was known to everybody.